All right, guys, finally, I apologize for being this late once again. Uh, I know I've been bad this year, you know, just a lot of personal stuff going on I had to handle. Uh, but I'm pleased to finally get down to this video, the last McFarlane Dragon of Series 8, uh, to round off the year 2017. Now, it's a pretty bittersweet moment for me uh, to be here to review the last dragon I have. And you know, it seems like not so long ago I decided to do just one review, the Series 4 Fire Dragon. And that turned into many, and eventually I got to doing all the dragons I bought. So we reached this point. This is the Series 8 Berserker Dragon. Now the first thing that strikes me in this dragon is contortion. Now this is an incredibly dynamic, sharp contrapostal pose from every angle that beautiful asymmetry gives it a crazy feel of tension. Now, much in the same way you'd expect the most imaginative fantasy artist would draw a dragon. You know, from the front, uh, the way the limbs are held, legs off to one side, you know, twisting with the action. And from the top, um, see how the, in the way the torso is rotated. So you have this very nice line through the shoulder girdle and from the right how the legs are split apart ready to do damage caught in the midst of action and from the left um, it's actually interesting because you can see it's not a clear side on profile but rather a three-dimensional form with the pelvic girdle rotated uh, thrust and from the back it's almost like you see um, Superman flying off in the comics uh, legs to one side, came up in the air. And you can see here, uh, while the head's twisted to one side, even the tongue, <laughs> even the tongue is twisted to one side. So the whole thing, <clears throat> so the whole thing hints at power, uh, action, ferocity, and fury. And I think that the name Berserker is very apt for this dragon indeed. So that's just the first impression from the post itself, which is, I would say, the most striking thing about this dragon. Let's look at some detail. Now, this is a true dragon with four limbs and two wings, but there's something rather humanoid about this. Uh, very similar, I think, to the warrior dragon we saw in series six. Uh, there are hints of armor in these plates over here. And indeed, as we'll see, it's pretty hard to differentiate between armor and dragon. Now, this is one green dragon. We've had a few before, but the greenness of this one actually leaps out at you. Um, at first glance, it looks like it was gone over in one color, but on closer examination, reveals that there are actually uh, very different shades, although very subtle. Uh, the green is broken up by the light yellow in these spikes here running down the tail, um, on the horn, and up here on the nose at least, there seems to be another wash to give it a slightly shiny sheen, uh, making it look very organic indeed. Though, unfortunately, not here on the tail, that just painted one straight color. Now the wings have these ochre patterns, uh, looking half like lightning and half like uh, simulated veins, and it adds a sharp contrasting interest to what would otherwise be pretty ordinary wings. Now, um, these wings actually look pretty good, and they're very unusual. If you look at the wing arm here, you'll see these uh, armor plating, and I'll get more into that in a minute. You also see some battle or uh, damage detail here in terms of these rents and tears at different parts of the wings. And I like that because it lends a touch of reality uh, to <laughs> what would otherwise be just another um, normal looking dragon wing. Now here, the underbelly plates are very nicely in uh, sculpted. And if I turn it this way, you'll see how beautiful that overlap is. Just very, very nice detail, all the ribbing and all the, um, up here. And of interest, um, again, I think it looks like armor, uh, but this is a very nice gold green color. Uh, again, I think they look like armor, and I'm tempted to think of that uh, based on the fact that you've got these spikes coming off 
through the pectorals. Now that would obviously never work in real life if there was just flesh. Still, it's a very interesting point for debate, which leads us to talking about the detail. Now for a McFarlane, it's good detail, though perhaps not as intricate as some of the other dragons that we've seen. Uh, in the skin, you'll see wrinkling along the skin of the tail here and up at the sides here and here and in the neck region you see these very very nicely sculpted and detailed skin folds uh, I love the way they are shaped they look very natural now in terms of scalation it's pretty hard to say what's armor, as we've noted. Um, certainly you see parts of it that could be armor. Like, for, for, for example, these uh, hip-tested plates here, and the tail plates uh, down here. Right. Uh, what look like van braces, uh, shoulder pauldrons, So you see what could be paw lanes on the knee here and here uh, grease on the shins and even elbow coulters uh, and indeed each of these possible armor pieces have a standardized uh, kind of pattern and structure for instance, if I were to show you, uh, let's get a look, right, you'll see here what looks like round pebble insets contrasting to the other more mosaic appearances of uh, what would definitely be scales on the animal. And on the other hand, if you look up the wing arms up here, you'll see the similar, uh, they'll see plating of a similar design which suggests that perhaps all these uh, armor looking pieces are in fact part of the dragon. And I like especially how these plates just lift off, uh, lift off the tail here. And it's all like it's part of a natural and normal movement rather than just lying flat on the dragon. And indeed if you look at uh, the dragon from different angles, you'll see uh, different parts where these plates are actually uplifted from the dragon. So, very nice detail. Now, as for the head, uh, the dragon has a very stocky, relatively blunt nose head of a bruiser. There's nothing uh, delicate or ephemeral about this guy. You know, everything is thick and strong. Uh, from these horns to this very thick and muscular neck, to the lower mandible, um, everything is built for strength and taking punishment. Uh, the jaw is a little interesting. If you look from the angle of the mandible here, you'll see that uh, these bony projections here uh, means that there is really no weak point to attack on this guy, not even from the back. Uh, one of them here looks like it's been broken off, possibly from a past battle. And the teeth are all very thick, blunt, and robust. The tongue has very, very nice detail here. Uh, these are little uplifted bits of what look like papillae detail onto it. And it's almost like the rasping tongue of a cat, of a predatory cat. Uh, I love also the sinister red eyes. Very, very nice. The claws are too cool not to talk about. Now, the form and attitude of all four uh, fingers, uh, or, or I, should, I should say the fingers and toes, are wonderful, you know, full of tension, and complement, I think, very nicely uh, these backward projections on the knuckles here. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but um, the green on the palms on the hands, here, here, and on the plantar surface of the feet are actually a very much darker green. So that 
again makes me wonder if that's the real part of the dragon and the rest of it is just armor. But this is really a very nice dragon as you can see. From every angle there's something um, you know, there's something that suggestive of high action and very very great tension. Again, note the overlapping plates. Very nice. Now the base is uh, is it's actually quite interesting, though not very fanciful. Uh, it has a mix of structures. You have these broken tree roots over here and over here. Um, rock surfaces, mossy detail. And it's all coloured rather nicely, uh, with several fades that are best appreciated only in person. Uh, it's not gaudy, and I think it's appropriate considering the relatively dab colour of this dragon. Uh, a base I think should support rather than detract from the main star of the whole diorama. And I think that this one does just that very nicely. So that's the Series 8 Berserker in review. Uh, to sum it up, I would say Uh, to sum it up, I'd say that the most defining thing about this dragon, no doubt, is the pose. You know, the beautiful curves and suggestion of action and violence um, just makes this one of the most ferocious, dangerous dragons in the McFarlane lines. And if I could get fanciful for a moment, you know, it's almost like... Uh, <laughs> it's almost like a defined angry shout out to signal that even though the McFarlane line draws to a close, this dragon at least is not going to go gentle into that good night. So that's the Series 8 McFarlane Dragon. Now right now I've reviewed all the dragons that I have and I feel happy to have created some reviews how uh, we should introduce or reintroduce this very beautiful collection of dragons to new collectors. And certainly I hope that my videos have helped you appreciate and maybe pointed out some detail on your own dragons you didn't notice before. Now I won't stop reviewing dragons and will continue to review things dragon related. There are many dragons out there not from the McFarlane lines and I'll do worthy ones as I find them. Uh, I also now have more time to turn my attention to dinosaurs and I hope that those of you who love dragons will also love dinosaurs. Uh, I want to thank you all for sticking with me especially during long periods of absences. Um, and you know, so many nice comments from so many people throughout the years. I'm looking forward to giving you something in the new year, so stay tuned.